Here at Southland Organics, we help growers find effective, lasting natural solutions for natural problems at a molecular level. Our goal is to help your farm be as strong and secure as possible. If you've been in commercial poultry for more than a few weeks, you've likely heard of or been required to windrow your house. It can take a lot of time and energy. Maybe you know what to do and have it down to a science, but you don't quite know why you do it. That's why we're here. Let's take a closer look. When the poultry industry went antibiotic free, a giant mess of problems arose from seemingly every layer of your house, from the floor to the birds, even the air you breathe. All of these problems find their roots in the same place, bad bacteria overgrowth. Windrowing helps annihilate bacteria. It is the first step in biosecurity of your house. Though it may seem tedious when done consistently and correctly, annihilating bacteria begins the process of building a foundational firewall against all sorts of diseases in your house. Remember, a healthy floor is a healthy bird. This week, we talked to our good friend and poultry farmer, Jason Jackson, about how he successfully sets up the windrows on his farm in northern Alabama. My target for 135 degrees is 132 degrees is thermophilic, which basically anything above that makes a very harsh environment for most bacteria to survive in. And some bacteria will survive in higher temperatures, but it is a difficult environment for them to be alive in. So once you get above that 135, you're, you're kind of in, ensuring yourself that you've got a good portion of the pile heated up enough to kill the majority of bacteria. These are about five feet, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of three feet tall. Sometimes it, it, we like to go taller, okay. but when you split them out like this, there's not enough litter sometimes to, to make them very tall if you have multiple windrows. If you want to pile them together and, and have less windrows, you can build them taller. The taller you can build them, the easier it is to build your heat. Mm. If you can get up to about five feet, you can really build a lot of heat that way. But when you split them off, if you take a five foot tall windrow and split it off, you typically end up with one, but you need to be about three feet tall just to be able to uh, get the heat and four to five feet wide. Now, you also need to make sure that you have moisture. If you don't have adequate moisture in, in the pile, you're probably going to either have to add moisture to it or your process of windrowing is not going to ever heat up and it's really gonna be wasted time. If you can check it and make sure that you have somewhere in the neighborhood of 30% to 35% moisture, you can, you can end up building heat fairly rapidly. If you have anything less than that, you probably need to end up adding some water to it. And you can simply do that by driving a, a sprayer along and spraying the, the surface. Well, I think you can probably get away with up to about 40, but much more than that, it's probably not going, it's, well, it's going to cause multiple problems. It, it's probably not going to heat properly and it's also going to end up having fairly wet litter. It's not going to dry out in the process. So you're going to have a harder time getting it to function uh, as a bedding material once you do level back out. Next week, we'll discuss the process to effectively annihilate the bacteria in litter in your windrow. If you need help with your windrow, strengthening your natural defenses, or simply would like to learn more, the Southland Organics team is here. Connect with me, Alan Reynolds, at 800-608-3755 or 
alan at southlandorganics.com. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends because we are constantly adding great educational content to help you keep your farm healthy.